allowing me to be here. And uh, I was here last year, so now I'm starting my whole routine over again. And um, I think the last time I was here, I was going to be here for a little while. We were in the room back there, and it got crowded. And then I had to leave because I had to go to deposit to their meeting. But I've already done deposit, and then I came back for this. So um, Dewey was right. Um, Sheriff Harder is with me tonight, and also Elaine Miller, who is my commissioner of planning and economic development. And I, Elaine's here tonight because I want her to speak to you about what's going on. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't on what's going on in the village of Deposit. We've been here quite a bit on um, doing and working on a Main Street program down there. So she's going to give you some more information about that. And I guess what I'm here for you is to answer any questions that you may have or concerns that you may have. Really? You must be doing a great job. No, no. It's just fabulous. <laughs> The other thing is, is that, um, and I'm very thankful that Sheriff Carter is here tonight, um, and the village of Deposit, I know um, the mayor calls me a lot and tells me that they have a lot of issues with drugs and that it's not getting any better, so um, I know that you really had no questions for me, but I thought maybe, because Stanford and the village are real close here, so I'm sure it affects you too, so you might want to be able to talk to the sheriff and he can help you in any issues you may have there. Um, but other than that, um, we're getting ready to start our budget for 2014. Um, and with us, we start now because it does take quite a while for us to get ours done. And again, we're looking at, um, you know, the money only goes so far. And um, we all know that the repairs are high and we need new equipment. And of course, everybody has a wish list. Um, the one thing that I, I do want to let you know that I'm doing is that on the welfare fraud, I continue on the welfare fraud. In fact, um, we just had a big meeting today, which we are going to, um, it seems as though as fast as we move them out, they're coming in. So we're really going to, um, we have a new program that we're going to be coming out with that we're going to be cracking down even more. But more important, and well, it's not more important, but I feel that it runs parallel with this, is that I'm working very closely with the Sheriff's Department, because they have an SIU unit for drugs. But to me, they're understaffed. And to me, they need more personnel because um, they do an excellent job, and, but they just need more people. So um, I asked the sheriff to please put in his budget for two more detectives for that unit because um, we have to make a really large impact on this, and we can't do it if we do not have the personnel. And like I said, this task force is it, it's fantastic. They work hard. Um, and um, they take their job very, very seriously. But um, the more people that we can put in this, uh, the more we're going we're gonna to capture, and we need to do this. Um, I've just come out with, um, you know, childhood hunger, which the statistics are alarming as far as when school's out. When, when children are in school, they get the um, free lunch and the, and the free breakfast. And, um, you know, then we look at the numbers, and in 2012, uh, 40, I think mean, it's 44 percent of the children, 45 percent of the children that were getting free lunches and free breakfasts in the summer. Only 14 percent of those still was, had food in the summer. So we're doing a big push on this, and um, a lot of the schools in the area are going to be open during the summer for the children to come in. And Broome County, I've asked all the employees of Broome County to bring in non-perishable items so that we can help with the food banks so that they can supply these meals. To, to the children. So those are some of the things that we're working on, but um, you know, my welfare fraud and the drug, um, the drug bust and, and trying to gear that up and do what we need to do is one of my main, one of my top priorities. So with that being said, I think that, um, not that I don't want you to go next, but I think it's only proper to let the sheriff speak now. And <laughs> He's got it gone anyway, so I have to. This isn't a question, it's more of an opinion. We just got through legend though. Flag and it says, but liberty and freedom and justice for all. And I believe our government, and I'm not, I'm just terribly disappointed in the whole deal. And uh, it talks about liberty and freedom and justice. Well, we got a justice department that's out of control of the federal government. Mm -hmm. our, our governor 
has aspirations of being the president. And uh, he doesn't really <coughs> concerned about what's happened down here in the bottom. He's worried about his, his uh, political fu future. We got a IRS thing that I don't trust at all. In fact, I don't trust the government at all. Anymore. I see them waste money, overspending, foolishness. Um, <coughs> I'm just telling an individual today, I think our politicians ought to spend one year serving and one year in jail. <laughs> well, basically, that's what they're doing now. So I, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> you know, I call, and I get in trouble for this, but I call Albany a sewer. Um, they've lost um, what they're there for, and they were supposed to be there for the people, and they're not. Um, you know, I, I agree with you. Um, when the governor came out with the state act, um, you know, that's the Second Amendment. You don't do that. Yeah. Um, and um, I support, I stand behind the gun owners. I, I'm a gun owner myself, um, and I'm not going to stand for it. You know, the way I feel, please know that this is my opinion. This isn't. Um, Burn County's opinion, this is my opinion, that, you know, every day as time goes on, if we don't pay attention, a little bit of our freedom is being taken away. Mm -hmm. But a lot, it's just a little bit all the time and we just don't know it. Um, you know, when I hear on the, and I see on the news that um, the phones that, that are being tapped, and I mean millions and millions of phones, and um, then when you're talking about the IRS, but boy, don't go against the IRS, but they can go and do what they want. They're lavish. Uh, trips and um, I, I believe that um, politicians really should get out there and do the job that everybody else is doing and, and see what it's like. Um, and I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid to work alongside of my employees. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Um, I am a politician because that's what they say I have to be when I want to be elected, but other than that, I don't want to be associated with it. So um, I agree with what you're saying. And um, I think that things need to be changed, um, and I think the only thing I can tell you is, is that when it comes time for elections, that we've got to make changes, and we, we need to do that. It seems to me that uh, the government has actually gotten so big that there's not much that the, the people can do about it anymore. But you got to remember, don't don't think that. <coughs> there's more of us than there is of them. You can see what they did controlling the last election for the, for the federal government. And I mean, it's. I know, I know. Um, it's and just horrible. It is. And if, and, but we, we still got to stay focused. We can't give up because um, this is our country. And, um, you know, we, we have to stand up to it. We really do. Um, because they can't, it, they can't be controlled like that. We just can't. And um, that's, that's what we're here for um, because this is ours. This is our land. This is our country. And, um, you know, so many of. Uh, our ancestors and our family members and that they fought to give us the freedoms that we have. And so for that, we have to continue fighting to keep those freedoms. And that's what I believe. And always bear in mind, this is where democracy starts. That's right. It is. In rooms like this across America. That's right. This is the start of democracy. It is. Yeah. So, but don't give up. Don't give up. I know you want to, but don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I just I don't see any else anymore. That's, it's it's so it's gotten so big that they're starting to control every aspect of our lives. Well, Even, I guess what the healthcare thing is coming. Well, that's you know what. If you want to talk about that, that's the fact that you think that that only affects businesses. It's not. It's affecting, like, um, Broome County. Uh, what that's going to be doing, this new health care act, to um, our expenses and that, it, it's huge. Um, we're just trying to pull the numbers together now. And um, it, it's, it, these, these numbers are just huge. I don't know, you know what anybody's thinking on this, but um, the cost of this is going to cost the people so much more. It's, and, it's, it's like our school district out here. It's got a two and a half million dollar budget for for health insurance. It's over 20% of the budget. It is. It is. And we're all facing the same, and it's going to get worse. Um, this this um, new act, is, it's not good. But when you think that you know you don't really stand a chance, I think you really got to look at the SAFE Act 
And what happened when he came out with that? Now I know that we're not done with this yet, but we stood up and everybody stood up and um, said no. And um, that's what happens, is that the people finally stand up and they say, no, you're not doing this. And um, I have, I mean, the governor just came out with a new tax-free zone. I'm sure you saw that. And, um, but I can't, I can't really support that because when I have all the businesses that we have, and you can take a business that could be on this side of the street, and they could be making one more product, and then another business comes in and they're going to create so many jobs and they're going to open up here and they get all free taxes, free income tax, free everything. Now these people over here have been in business for 20 years. Their employees, they, they might as well leave and go over here because they're not going to pay that much in income tax if they go across the street. Um, so I, I'm really not, I can't buy into this. I think we do need to do something to help our businesses in New York State. But you can't do that because to me it's discrimination mm -hmm. on what you're doing with this business compared to this business. But we do need to do something, but I don't think this is the right way. And I'm not telling you anything that I haven't let the governor know and knowing he's not happy with me because I won't support him on this. So that's okay. <laughs> you can tell him for me, I don't think that the future of upstate New York is going to be resolved by corking wine bottles dealing cards at a casino, or putting caps on yogurt cups. It's not going to happen. But they keep touting that as the savior of upstate. I don't think so. All right. Sheriff? Excuse me. Yeah. Guys. I'd like to... Uh, <clears throat> Doing. What are you telling him that ask the question you don't have to get on? <laughs> you feel under the bus. Do it. Well, first I'd like to thank you for the good job you're doing. Thank you. Um, I think you're doing an excellent job. Uh, we went through this road use yes. agreement. Yes. With, uh, and I was wondering how we have a couple issues about that. We thought we did, did a good job. I uh, like the idea that it, Something we wanted that right from the start. Something across the whole county that yep. would be pretty much the same thing. And I was wondering how this has gone as far as the all the municipalities are they jumping on it? They are, um, and and you do have to tweak it a little bit depending on your own municipality. You're gonna you know with your lawyer you make a little change here and there, but everybody's jumping in, especially when we said we'll pay for it. And um, uh, the reason help. is is that. <laughs> Before we said that, we weren't getting a lot of buy-in, but I believe in this because um, it's easier if it's just one across the county so that everybody isn't going from this place to this place to this place. So if we have a uniform agreement, um, but I have to say, yeah, they're, they're jumping in, and it looks like the majority of them are going to be in on it, if not all of them. Well, it, the whole plan looked very good. <clears throat> the other issue was, is, uh, <coughs> actually Delta. Yes. Uh, we had looked at Delta several several different meetings that we went to. Um, there was a lot of good about it, but there also was a lot of concern about Delta. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> naturally the county paying for it was a help. Yep. Uh, there was some talk that you're going to use some of our sales tax to pay for it. But that's not true. No, that's not true. Did Mayor Ryan call you about that or something? No, that's not true. No, but there um, was there was no. Well, you stuck here. They don't talk to me too much. <laughs> it's okay, do it, because you don't talk to me too much in the morning. But, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess the concern when we went to meetings that Delta put on it. Uh, they basically take over. They take control. They do a, a relieve the municipality and most of the duties. But a concern that we've always had is that they uh, they put themselves in such a strong position that they can. Uh, <clears throat> Doesn't seem like municipality kind of loses control of charges. Now, did that issue come up with you? Not really, because um, 
it takes away from us. We, they're going to go out and do the initial and, and the permitting and like that for, for um, the contractors. So um, that's something that none of us, I don't feel, any of the municipalities, uh, we don't have large code enforcement offices that we can really do this and make sure, you know, do all the work on the roads to decide, you know, what what should be done. So that's why we thought this was good. But um, when I was supervisor, I had Delta in back in um, 2009, I think it was early 2010, and went over this plan. And, and at that point, I wasn't bought into it either. Um, as, as they progressed and they changed the way they do things, I think it's a lot better. Otsego County has now gone with it. Um, their towns and villages have climbed on board. Uh, I think that um, from what the way it was originally to the way it is now is a huge difference. The only thing that this plan doesn't include is the enforcement, which the county can enforce you know, all roads in Broome County. But I think that's something that each municipality has to look at and do their own little enforcement. But the work that Delta is going to do is going to save us so much work and time because none of us have, the county didn't even have enough people to take care of our roads and make you know to do um, this, the survey on our roads and see um, if what coming in and whether they should, how much they should pay, what the permit should be. I think it's a good thing and I think Delta, um, is that they're not taking anything away from us. They're not. I wasn't concerned, maybe this may come across That's wrong. okay. I wasn't concerned that they were taken away from the municipality, but it gives them control pretty much to charge what they want to charge when they're dealing with the... Uh, I think they have a structure on that though too, so they can't just go out and charge whatever and then really yank the prices up. No, they that, can't do that's that. The, that's, the, that's the thing that I, no. I wanted to hear. That was something that uh, we did. We did ask them in, in our meetings, our, the county <coughs> at the county level, we asked them, um, so what are you, you going to go and rake everybody over the goals and that? Yeah. And um, no, they're not. They have a structured fee, set fee schedule that they would, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. That, that was a concern that yeah. we had. Yeah. And we did like that uh, in the county, a uh, road use agreement that specified that the sheriff was involved in, in some of the, uh, I gotta be careful here, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, what was the sheriff I don't know what he was involved in. I mean, I, I like that part, that it was uh, somewhat in the report. I think it's with the citations that it was regarding uh, they were served papers to the contractor if there would be yeah. Yeah. If there was any real problems in that, yeah, well, then under they this, would. Under the discipline yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah, that was part of the discipline part of it. Sorry, you know. <laughs> that, that gave us a good feeling. Yeah. So there was a lot that went in. We did work a hot, long time on this. And what we also <coughs> did is we brought in all the different contractors. We brought them in from um, the logging industry, we brought them in from the garbage industry, we brought them in from um, the building contractors, we brought them in from every industry that we could think of so that they could look it over and see what they thought of it too. We had two meetings with them and then um, we had the meeting with the municipalities, let them look at it, and then we finally were able to come out with what we came out with. Uh, we think it's very good. We've uh, experienced some unusual problems already it, uh, and some of that is to deal with uh, your own local businesses I know. and how you write something that controls and maybe this shouldn't come up the process but controls gas pipeline and that type of thing without hurting your local business with some of our local business out here stone and logging all pretty heavy loads right. and, uh, and that's why we had to bring those people in because we had to hear what they had to say too because if we went out with this and didn't even bring in all the different industries it would look like we weren't even making them part of the process and they weren't involved and we learned a lot by bringing them in and we were able to adjust things accordingly and when we did this we also had Delta at the table with us as we went through it all with the different um, industries that we had there. Yeah, and that, that's the difficult part. We're dealing kind of with that right now. We have a road use agreement and a local <coughs> road use the same road with some heavy loads. Yeah, so how do you? 
and that was something that we had a concern when we had a meeting uh, before we even wrote the uh -huh. second agreement. I think this this will be our third one already. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, there was a gentleman from Pennsylvania that uh, actually was in a similar business, and um, he would draw in a lawsuit where, uh, let's say, Company A. Uh, pays 80% of the damage and a local business gets drawn in and pays 20% of the damage and um, that can be a, a real hit on a local. Yes it can, yes it can. So we think that this um, agreement is fair and fair for all the industries and the way it's written and um, we're excited about it but most all of the, um, like I said, all the, most all the municipalities are buying in. I don't. I think when it's all done, I think that um, they'll all be in on it. Very good. And how long do we anticipate before that actually gets? Well, like we've been waiting for the answers to come back. We're getting them back. Um, this is going to go to the legislature in July, and so we're hoping that um, it does get held over and goes through in July, and then we can start. Then we'll be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, and then once that happens, like um, then you'll all have to adopt, you know, to your town spot. That's what we're looking to do. Very good. Okay. Sheriff? <laughs> well, my job was to come out here and make sure nobody had more than several rounds in there. What's that? <laughs> 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 I see all the things I'm going to report back to this. Sheriff? 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 The governor's been a pain in my ear, <laughs> you know, over this whole matter. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm the, Gun safe law, there are some parts that I'm in favor of. There's quite a bit of I'm not in favor of. Um, I have to watch what I'm doing because I'm a constitutional officer and also an uh, officer of the court. And I have to obey certain laws. But um, as far as the governor, what he did with the seven rounds on the magazine, the most ridiculous thing going. Yeah. Nobody makes a seven round magazine for one. If he left it at 10, it would have been hardly any problem. And the opt out law, if he'd said, anybody from here forward has to fill out the form, believe me, it has saved a lot of work and trouble for my staff. I mean, we have thousands of them, and I don't even use a fisherman's tail on this one, stack that high of opt-out laws that we have to file. There's no extra money for doing that. If anybody's been down our place and see this light, kind of give a pistol from it or their amendments, but I got three people, that's all they do all day long, keep them busy. So we had to bring in some <coughs> college kids uh, part-timers and, and they're working every day trying to get rid of that pile because this piece of paper, I'm sorry, Barbara, <coughs> you fill out a free opt-out law, we have to go over and find a little three by five card, stamp that, and then go get your current <coughs> file with all your information and put it in there. It's two different files. It's a lot of work. Uh, so it caused us a lot of problems too on that end. Uh, as far as the narcotic end, uh, we've been out here, uh, uh, Chief Cantwell has been out uh, has to come out a couple times. The task force has come out this year and made a couple of arrests. You may not even know it. Uh, we're kind of sneaky. It's part of our job. <laughs> and the cover officers worked their way out here and did what they did and went back. Uh, we had a chief's meeting today and the uh, chief saying that they're uh, probably going to be called to come out again. We have a task force of 12 officers. Six out of Binghamton and six out of the Sheriff's Office. I'm sorry, there will be 13. <coughs> and one from Johnson City. And uh, most of our time, you know, right up front with you, it's mostly all in the city of Bennington. But we do get down through JC and Endicott and well, you know, we come out here once in a while. And we get out in the backfield of some, but most of your drug activity is in the center of Bennington. And uh, that uh, 12, uh, 13 person task force last year made over 500 charges on people. They're going all the time knocking doors. Uh, so we're here, but if, if you have a problem, feel free to call us and uh, we'll address it the best we can. Um, uh, they can <coughs> not more requested to. Yes. I got a question for you. You know, you were talking about those seven round clips, but it didn't say anything about, like you could have 20 of those seven round clips. And what's it take one second, push that button and slam the other clip in? It just didn't make sense. The whole lot of makes sense. No, no. I mean, you can have a 10 round magazine, but you only have seven rounds in it. Now, I've told people this before. Actually, you can cheat it here. You can put eight chamber one in the chamber. Okay? Yeah. And then the magazine has only got seven. Yeah. So, uh, 
<laughs> you know, I mean, it's been a problem for us, believe me, a royal headache. Uh, the Remember state sheriffs throughout the state have been objecting, uh, filed a joint lawsuit against the governor on it. He's not happy about it. He even told our sheriffs to keep their mouths shut in a private meeting, and uh, they weren't going to do that. Well, I remember I got my permit in the late 60s, cost me five dollars, <laughs> and it was forever. But then, now they want, they're talking about making you... Can that's recertification? Recertification every yeah, five years. Yeah, it probably cost you three bucks, what they're going to do. It's almost the same what's going on now. I mean, I said, what in the world is recertification? Believe me, if you try to get answers out of Albany, you probably already know that. Uh, it's like pulling teeth, easier pulling teeth. Uh, because there's no thought in what went on in those laws, so nobody had the answer. But they're finally coming out with a recertification. All that means is you've got to come in and update your permit. You've got to tell them, you know, your new address. Uh, when I worked in Pushmits 17, about 17 years ago, I used to look at these photos and go, that's your high school graduation picture. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Nobody comes back again, really. So this, it, it's not going to be that bad. You'll get a letter in the mail from the state police telling you to come in to see us. You just come in and update your permit. Uh, it's, I think it's like three bucks. Permits have gone up to 140. Uh, the uh, state of New York gets almost every penny of that. We do make some money. That doesn't even cover our costs, but not much. I was asking somebody about what are you going to do with all those clips? You know, that are over seven rounds or ten rounds. They said we should sell them somebody in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got to watch selling guns too because the brother to brother can't sell a gun. What you do then is you drive over the PA border and you give it to your brother and you come back over. Yeah, it's a ridiculous law. That's how you get around it, honestly. I mean, the way that the governor came up with this thing, there was no input by law enforcement whatsoever. Not from the state police, not from the sheriff, nor the chief of police inspector. None. The him and a bunch of whoever got together and designed this thing. And, okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if anybody has any enforcement problems out in the area. Uh, you know, if there is, you can always give us a call. Uh, we'll see what we can do for you. I can't promise you everything. I have uh, 33 deputies to cover 16 towns and uh, five villages in the city. We actually do cover the city of Binghamton times. We're crossing back and forth through. Or the city on weekends, Friday nights and Saturday nights, but State Street gets a little lively. They call us about uh, 2 or 3 in the morning for the big fights and the problems we're having. Um, but, you know, my deputies are out here. Uh, we had one out here yesterday working. <coughs> zone 1E, which is 1 East. And uh, there was out of working yesterday. And whenever I get enough personnel, I can send a car that this far to do that. I try to. But you have to I'm sorry to say this, but you have to realize that the bulk of our work, which you should be thankful for, is more west. Because that's all the problems, you know, the domestics and the robberies and the burglaries and the larcenies and so forth. And you don't really have that out here. You should be very thankful for that problem. Not having that problem. Okay, anybody else have any questions of me? All right, I'll sit down and keep quiet and get your move, meeting moving. Yeah. One more. Now, are you allowed to have more than a uh, 10 round clip? <coughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. right. I don't listen to <laughs> there was some agencies made their officers take and probably well, down to seven. I don't believe in that. No. I, I just got one thing. You, you can sit down, but this goes for multi actually. I realize there's nothing you can do really, there's not a lot you can do about the narcotics out here because you're busy in Binghamton. I mean, I know where the drugs are, they're all over the place. But the few arrests that we do make out here, Please make known to the, the DA that CDs aren't the answer. If we can, if we can get these people to serve a little time, do something with CDs, are not the answer. We don't get a whole lot of arrests out here. We'd like to see more action taken on. What's happened too is the the choice of drugs has gone from marijuana to cocaine, and now we've gone to heroin. Heroin is, is, is huge, and we're down into the teenage kids even with it down, down in our main areas. I'll just let you know, and the guys are fighting every day against the I know. It's uh, almost, actually almost a losing war. You can't keep up with them. It's all and they just keep pouring in, pouring into the city. Mm -hmm. It's cheap. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.
You're up, Mike. Do you mind? No. Okay, really quick, we don't want to keep you here all night. Um, hi everybody, I'm Elaine Miller, and as Debbie said, I'm the Commissioner for Planning and Economic Development for Broome County. And uh, just here to update you on some things that we've been working on. Um, I've been here quite a bit actually, Debbie's been here. Um, I've been meeting with the deposit partners on a number of issues. <coughs> just a little bit of background, I started meeting with the deposit partners, and Gail is here, she's part of that group, and uh, with, with the mayor of deposit. And uh, we've been talking, we started out talking about what the various challenges and opportunities are uh, facing the village and uh, kind of drilled down to what some of the priorities are in terms of community development, revitalization, and things like that. To make a long story short, um, what we've drilled down to is um, what the number one priority for the village of Deposit is a new sewer line down Front Street. Um, as you are all, I'm sure, are very aware, the sewer line currently goes under the row of buildings. And uh, that's a little risky, and it's not a desirable thing. So um, everyone has, as a group, has decided that's really a top priority to get a new sewer line put in. So we've been working on that with the village and with the deposit partners, trying to uh, get some cost estimates together and identify some sources of funding for that. We have subsequently done that. Um, we've got a price of about $260,000 to put the new sewer line in and demolish the old sewer line that's running through the basements. And I've seen some pictures of it. You're probably a lot more familiar with this than I am. You have to literally crawl over the sewer line to get to the other side of the basement. So um, I didn't think that was a horrible sounding price. So it's something that you know could potentially be funded through the Regional Economic Development Council. You've probably heard the, uh, the acronym CFA, which stands for Consolidated Funding Application. And those applications are going to be available um, any day now. It's this month, and they're going to be due on August 12th. So we're going to continue working with the village and the village partners to see if we can access some of that money. The other thing we've been talking about is just under the guise of um, revitalization for the downtown area is potentially a Main Street program. And we've been talking about this for quite a bit of time now. And uh, the last time I was here, we met with a group of property owners to see what the interest might, the level of interest might be. And it looked like we had enough interest to move forward with an application process. And part of that process, the application process, is to have a public meeting now. So we have scheduled that, and I'm going to pass it, let you pass this down. This is a postcard, just hot off the press. I, I have some extras if anyone wants to take one and pass them on. <coughs> These are going to go out to every village resident tomorrow. So if you live in the village, you'll get another copy of this in the mail in a couple of days. And now we're going to put some posters up as well. Um, this meeting is going to be, uh, this is a, a more of a formal meeting. It's not a hearing, it's really just a public meeting. And um, we'll be talking about what the parameters of the program are, how to access the program, how to apply for it, participate in it, what the required requirements would be, and so on and so forth. Um, at that time, we're going to hand forms out to any interested property owners and uh, let them show us just what their intentions are, if they'd like to participate. Does it mean you're signing your life away? Does it commit you to the program? It just demonstrates to the state that we have some uh, pretty solid level of interest in the program. So that's, those are two of the things that we've been working on. Uh, we've also been talking about a riverfront park. Um, right at the end of Front Street going over towards the river. Um, I know that there was a study done a few years ago and the village has some money from the state to do a, um, a design for the park at this point. So we'd like to work with the village to um, also move that project forward, apply for some funding through the Department of State Local Waterfront Revitalization Program. So um, those are some of the things that we've been working on the local level, um, among others. Um, th those are really the highlights. Um, hope to see some of you at the public meeting in a couple of weeks. Um, more on a countywide level, um, you, uh, just tell you that the incubator project is full speed ahead. We're still working on that. We have um, 11 million. Well, we have nine million dollars to get started, and we're ho very hopeful we're going to get another couple of million dollars from the uh, Federal Economic Development Administration. So that project is full speed ahead. Uh, the university is in the process of hiring an executive director and uh, someone else to oversee the construction. So uh, the design act firm is going to be selected. If it hasn't already been, it's going to be selected in the next week or so. 
and uh, we'll have a design completed and hopefully a shovel in the ground by this time next year. Uh, farmer's Market, again, is full speed ahead on that. Uh, we have a design uh, come pretty much complete at this point. We're doing a um, uh, archaeological study at this point, and we are running into some challenges. We have a problem there. Yeah. <laughs> we hit the bones. Yeah, so we hit the bones. <laughs> now we can't come to a stop until the state can decipher what right. tribe they belong to. And yeah. These things are never easy. Eventually they get done, and this will absolutely eventually get done. Uh, we've got the funding in place, we've got the design in place, but we have to go through this process. Um, there's always going to be bumps in the road, and we, we have to deal with the archaeology at this point, but it's going to happen. Um, and I hope to tell you next year, this time, we're, I hope we're cutting a ribbon. Absolutely. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but that's it's still an exciting project. Just wanted to give you an update on that. Um, we have a lot of things in the hopper, a lot of things that we're working on. Um, I don't want to take your time up all night, but as I said the last time we were here, um, we're always willing to, I'm always willing to come out and meet with you, talk with you, and um, Gail can tell you I'm here quite a bit anyhow, and you're always welcome to come to, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I, you're always welcome to come to the partners' meetings, right? And um, we'll see some of you at the meeting. And does anyone have any questions? All right, well, thank you so much for having us here tonight. Thank you. We're going to let you get out of your meeting. So, but thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate it. And we'll be here in another month with a hot dog. We're going to have our hot dog. Thank you. We'll show up. Okay. All right. See you guys. Bye bye. See ya. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Hey. Uh, most part of the program is that um, his Brad was unable to come tonight. Uh, his father is very ill, and uh, I believe you all have a. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cut and dry. <coughs> is there any questions in reference to? No, that's good. <coughs> Several times. I, by the way, I'm Carl K. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you in person. Yeah. You I I called your house. Yeah, you, I talked to you a couple yeah. times. Well, I was impressed when this started because I'm thinking, boy, this guy's on the ball. You know, well, we never I, stopped ringing. It's probably three times while I'm here. <laughs> well, well, we're good. Is it the same number? You sure? Well, seven. Seven. I can take you right for you. Nine seven three. It actually it's from the wall. Nine seven three. Four six zero. Seven seven six zero. That's the same number that uh, 
tax yeah. assessor's office. Yeah. You, that's that's right. the one. That's yeah. the number I kept calling because I was trying to call you. I kept getting that number is not yeah, service. Debbie, Debbie left me a message and I called you and, and I called since then. I used this phone. So I called her once and she gave me that number and I told told Becky. I said I tried that number and it's not in service. So in the meantime, then I tried to call Becky again because I tried to get hold of you and I couldn't get her. Ah. So. Maybe but there was a message, know. but there was a message, the message on the answering machine gave me that same number. So I tried to call you again, and I couldn't get it. Because I hadn't heard anything from you, and I'm thinking, right now. Yeah. If, if it was a cell phone, if it was a cell phone, don't be surprised if it was an AT&T or Verizon problem that had been having some troubles. I expect the AT&T. And it's all going through well, the it, towers. If either way, well, if you either leave a message here, or... So I said, well, I don't know what, I left a message at the tax assessor's office, right. the first one, yeah, he, I got, I got that, that. Yeah. but I left another call, and I'm thinking, boy, trying to get, trying to find that code enforcement officer is harder than trying to find you in Decker's ball after you hit it in the woods. <laughs> well, I don't know. but I'm going to be not that hard to find. <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that. That's all right. But it is working. I mean, it's ringing in. So, well, whatever. I'll try it again in the morning. I appreciate it. Okay? Yeah. I will do that. Not that you ever hit any in the woods, do we? You didn't have to find the bow. Bo found you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry, I, Apparently, I mean, I haven't had any phone problems. That doesn't mean that there are problems. If you have a cell phone, you know, you, you don't know when there's stuff down there. You know, you talk to someone and disappear. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Now, we're going to take a look by the dog. We're, we're going to have an executive session later on. Correct? <coughs> yes. Okay. Uh, minutes. Uh, we're at the meeting 514. Do you have anything else we do? No, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, all you.
the drill construction, things like that. The class of uh, 2017 has gotten back to me. Uh, they're going to be using the town highway garage on July 13th between the time of 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. for the car wash fake sale we approved last month. Uh, the new summer kids we've had this year, they're doing a great job. I'll tell you what, they really helped out. Uh, the regular crew, they've been helping mowing, you know, traffic control. I think that the employees over there have seen a big relief for them, you know, hopefully it's a much safer place now for them to be working along the roads with the snow we have. They've been doing a great job. Uh, let's see, I also took another class on June 6th. Uh, with the storm water runoff of the New York State DEC at the town of Shenango. A lot of new rules and regulations have been into effect for that. Uh, it's basically going to go to your planning department, the storm water runoffs and things like that, uh, with permitting the different projects or whatever, building homes or any kind of development. So it's a uh, really good program that they had in effect. And I'm sure they're going to bring a presentation to the town board before they do any kind of approvals of that. The fire department took a tour of the highway garage last night. Uh, they're recommending that we need to install smoke detectors and carbon dioxide detectors in our break room for our employees and also in the office areas. At this time, there's nothing there. I need to have them put into place uh, as soon as possible. So uh, I'm looking to see if you guys might, if I get a hold of our electrician, Toby Smith, to see if that's something you can do for us. All right, also on classes here, I take another class today uh, to do with Flood Task Force, and they're basically explaining the new uh, ways they're controlling water instead of putting the dams up uh, and kind of tunnel the water a certain place. They're just showing how they're just uh, putting the water in different places so it equally affects everything. So there's some you know, tunnel things up and having big gushes and huge floods. Andrew Como has announced there's a $500 million grant money that was available for hazards mitigation. Um, right now I'm looking into it. As the town has a few places that we can actually benefit from it. There's a few places, big culvert plates, should be actually bridgeways or something in that effect. And I'm going to be uh, filling out an application through the county to see if we can be accepted to the program <coughs> this mitigation for some of our here. The new carport has been installed over the gas pump station at the garage. It will leave a couple of lights out there underneath it for night time. So when our plowing snow at night or whatever, for the safety of our employees, I think we ought to have that lit up out there. So hopefully we don't have any accidents when they fall down and hurt or anything. So have it lit up there. Uh, I have talked to Toby about this when he was doing our lights, and he told me uh, it should be any more than $500 to run lights out there. That's including the his labor and plus all the lighting stuff that he would need. Yeah, he was in my office today and he talked about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, FEMA, as of today, has approved the Broome County Hazardous Mitigation Policy. Uh, if you guys remember a few months ago, we sat down and looked at our town of Sanford Hazardous Mitigation Policy. We had put into effect what we thought was hazardous to the town town-wide and things like that. Uh, basically, I explained to you, it would go to the state of New York, then it would go to the federal government, and as of today, it has been approved. So what's going to happen is all the towns is going to have to uh, make a resolution to accept the county's plan. And basically what's going to, I have a copy here of a sample of the county of our, our attorney, so you can write up an official one for the town here. This is just a sample to give you today to give everybody what we need to do. How long is that good for? Five years. Every five years we've got to update this. <coughs> also, uh, <coughs> now you say you're going to forward, forward that to our attorney? We need to forward that to our attorney to set it up for the town itself, yes. Okay. Under hazardous mitigation, also, uh, I learned today that the Constitution Pipeline has contacted the county looking to help community, 
communities with hazardous mitigation projects. In regarding to that, they're looking to help fund them. Uh, that's only been a limited time. I guess they have a little money they want to play with or whatever. And actually, I'm surprised Elaine didn't touch on it. She was actually brought to my attention today. It's just going to be a short-term thing. Uh, they have money, I guess, they're trying to donate to the communities throughout Broome County. So if there's any uh, <coughs> we may have along, you know, roadways or anything like that, or kind of any kind of developments, you know.